Hello and welcome back to our very last topic in differentiation. Today we're going to be looking at optimization. Now, I'm not going to lie to you when I say that optimization is probably one of the hardest bits of differentiation, but with a lot of practice, you will get your head around what methods to use or what formula to use in particular cases. And in today's video, I'm going to be going over a few pretty complex examples and I will try my best to explain not only what optimization does, but how we use it to optimize. So if we looked at the video on closed intervals, if you go back and take a look at it, we saw that it was possible to find the maximum and minimum values of a function. Say for example, we had some sort of curve that looked like this. We said that we could find the maximum and minimum values like so. Well, we can use this to help us with optimization. And this is because it can be very useful in particular areas of applications, such as a company might have a function, say PX, which predicts the profit um, if some sort of amount of money was spent on raw materials. So this function here would tell us how much profit um, is spent. And this would be very useful in finding the value of X, which is spent on raw materials, which would give us the maximum profit. So the process of finding these optimal values, as we're trying to find the optimal value of X, which will give us the greatest value of P in this case, is called optimization. And sometimes we have to find the appropriate function before we start or optimization or optimizing, if you like. Now, usually optimization will come in two parts. The first part will be um, just working out the formula or the function that we need in the optimization case. And the second part will be the actual optimizing stage. Now, usually if you, can, if you struggle to do part A, you will still always be able to do part B because part A will often give you the function that you need. It just asks you to show that that is the function you need for optimization. Whereas the second stage will be finding some value X that optimizes that function. And if we're given the function, well, we can just say in part B that that is the function, but part A is the important bit and that is working out the formula. So I'm going to go over a wee example here and I'll do another one straight after as well. So this question tells us small wooden trays with open tops and square bases are being designed. They must have a volume of 108 cubic centimeters. And we've got a little diagram of them here. So we can see it's a wooden tray that's got no top on it. And we can see because it is a square base, it's going to be X by X. This, this is technically X back here, but they've not done it because they've told us it's square based and the height is just going to be H. And we're also, we also need to note that the volume of this tray is 108 cubic centimeters. Then we're told the internal length of one side is X and the height is H. And part A asks us to show that the internal surface area A of one tray is given by A equals X squared plus 432 divided by X. Now, how on earth have they done this? Well, you might think that the internal surface area is just four times x h plus x squared. But that doesn't look anything like this. And what I've done there is I've simply said one of these edges are x h. So four of them is four x h. And then the bottom part is x times x, which is x squared. But that doesn't quite give us this here. And the difference in this is that they haven't got h in this. So we said that the 
internal surface area is going to be 4xh times uh, plus x squared. But we, we don't want that. We want this here, right? So we know that the volume, we can start off by saying that the volume, I'll just state that this is part A as well. We know that the volume of this tray is going to be x squared times h because it's the area on the end times the height. So if we're wanting to work out h, we can use other facts such as the volume. So if we know that the volume is x squared h, we're also told that the volume is 108. So we can simply say that 108 equals x squared h. And we can rearrange to work out what h is. We say that h is going to be 108 over x squared. So now we've worked out of an equation for h, which is in terms of x. And now it looks like we might be able to work out this surface area because this time, instead of where we had a h, we can substitute h as this 108 over x squared, right? So we said that the surface area, which is the area of all the, the sides and, and the bottom, is going to be 4 times xh plus x squared, which is the bottom one. But this does not look like this. Well, we've got h. We can substitute this h in for this now. So we'll say this is 4x multiplied by 108 over x squared plus x squared. And now we can rewrite this. Well, we can see that this is going to be 4x times 108, which is 432x over x squared. And this is plus x squared and now we can do a bit of simplifying because we have two x's on the we have well we have an x in the top and x squared in the bottom so the x's will cancel out one there and one there and we'll get 432 over x and it's plus x squared which I'm actually going to just rewrite as x squared plus 432 over x and as we can see here this is what they gave as the function a, or the equation a, which is the, the total internal surface area of the tray. And that's what we've done here. So to reiterate what we've done in the first part of the question, although it seems difficult, is we have used some sort of other formula to get a formula for a value, say h, and substituted that in to the surface area of this internal tray. So we can look at, the best way to do this is look at the equation they've given, see what letter is not involved, which is h, and therefore we know that we need to work out h in some sort of different way. How else can we do it? Well, they've given us the volume, so we know it's got something to do with volume, which we said was x squared h, and then we work out h, and then substitute it in to what we would think would be the surface area, and that will give us what they've given us here. Now, as I said, part B is not necessarily always going to be the harder part. It's usually the easier part, especially if you struggle with part A, because you can always do part B, and that's because part B is the optimization stage. Now, optimization, as we said when we talked about closed intervals, is finding the maximum value. So we want to work at the max x value that will give the greatest A. So we know to do this, we need to work out the stationary points. And to do that, we know the stationary points occur when the derivative is equal to zero. So we need to find the derivative of this function A. So we'll start off by writing the derivative, um, D, sorry, it should be DA, DX, because we're differentiating a with respect to x. This is going to give us, well, we can see that the x squared is just going to go to 2x. And we do have this 432 divided by x. And 432 
divided by x is the same as 432x to the minus 1. So we would say that this is going to be, when we do the derivative of this, we're going to get minus 432 x to the minus 2, which is equal to 2 x minus 432 over x squared, like so. So that's us preparing to differentiate. And here we know that stationary points occur and the derivative is equal to zero. So we want to do 2x minus 432x squared equals zero. And the best way to solve in this case is probably multiply everything through by x squared, which will give us 2x cubed minus 432 is equal to zero because zero times x squared is just zero. And then what we can do here is we can take out, um, or we can divide everything by two as well, actually. So if we divide everything by two, we get x cubed minus 216 is equal to zero. And then therefore x cubed equals 216. So x is the cube root of 216, which is just six. So we've worked out the x value of the stationary point but we want to work out the minimum surface area um, for this question. So let's find the dimensions of the tray using the least amount of wood. So to find the dimensions, we obviously need to work out what h and x are. We've already worked out x. We said that x is six, but we want to work out h. So how can we work out h? Well, we said in the last question that h is equal to, we said was 108 over x squared. So therefore, we know that h is going to be equal to 108 over six squared, which if you put into your calculator, will just give you three. Now it can also help to work out the nature of this stationary, of this, uh, stationary point to see if it gives you a maximum or minimum. Now, because we are asked to find the least amount of wood, we would hope that this stationary point's nature will give us a minimum stationary point. So if we test that, let's do a little test here. So our value x, which we've only got one stationary point is six, our dA dx and our graph if we substitute in six into here, we should find it gives us zero. Now we want to look at it as it approaches six, we'll look at the point say 5.9, and just after it leaves six, we'll look at say 6.1. If we substitute 5.9 into dA dx, we should find it gives us a negative value. And if we substitute in uh, 6.1 into dA by dx, we find it gives us a positive value. So we can see that our graph is going to look something like this at this stationary point, which again looks or correlates to something like this. So we can see that this is a minimum stationary point, which is what we need because we're looking for the least amount of wood. If we were looking for the maximum amount of wood, we would look for a maximum turning point. But because we have a minimum, we know that six is the correct value. So we substitute that into our formula for H and we would say that, so a length and depth of six centimeters and three centimeters uses the least amount of wood. And that is our first question on optimization. So as you can see, if we just looked at this question blind and we were just given this formula and we were just going straight to part B, we would actually be able to do it just by doing a little bit of stationary point work. So it's not too complex, but we did need to know this formula for H. So in some cases, part B might actually help you work out part A.